welcome to my first solo indie dev blog. Hold on to your hats because there's a bunch of features I want to showcase in today's video. My name is Gareth and this is Cloak Protocol. I've been making 3D game ready assets and props for the past four years. And I came to a point where I decided that I want to make my own game. This has been an on again, off again part of my life for the better part of 10 years. Everything between tutorial help, losing motivation, starting a project and deleting it, to simply not being inspired at all, being part of the learning experience. I finally got to a place in my life where I have learned to manage my ADD and imposter syndrome to finally start developing my very first indie title. Let's start at the beginning. Development started in early 2022. A bunch of ideas were being tried and tested. I thought about making a multiplayer game like Among Us. I thought about making a point and click game where the detective needs to solve otherworldly mysteries. None of it stuck. You see, the indie games market is so saturated that if you or your product don't stand out just even a little, you'll get lost in the ocean that is indie games on Steam. So I got to thinking. Why not make a genre I am extremely passionate about and build a prototype from there? That is exactly what I did. I think a great place to start will be with simple movement. I really wanted to get that feeling of the original Metal Gear Solid game. I played that game to death and it's one of my all time favorite games. It was important for me to keep that feeling of that isometric top down view. I then decided that I should follow the example of the other Metal Gear Solid games and allow the player to aim down sight. However, I wanted to change that a little. I wanted the player to look over the character's shoulder to take shots or to scope out an environment. It was important for me to limit the player's movement in this mode as I don't want the player to run around in a third person view when I'm intending them to experience the game from a top-down isometric view. Development on this was a lot of trial and error, as I really wanted this game to succeed. I researched all of the latest tools and possible features I could harness when developing Cloak Protocol. The idea was to adopt all the new features and try steer clear of all the old and or legacy development tools. This required a lot of R&D as I switched from the old input system on Unity to the new input system. I moved away from the universal render pipeline to the high definition render pipeline. This created its own set of issues as I started the project with the universal render pipeline and I had to convert all materials and assets I had to the HDR pipeline. Along with this, I faced a lot of issues with Un Unity assets store assets. The issue with 90% of the assets are that they are all made with the universal render pipeline. So all I had was pink textures everywhere I looked. I also used Mixamo to get my basic animations going for the main character. These animations, in my honest opinion, are not great and very generic. I really want to look into getting my own animations made. I'm also looking at investing in a motion capture shoot like Rococo. But Sony also has just released a new motion capture project called Mocapi that I'm keeping my eyes on. Any Japanese viewers watching? Let's chat. I would really need assistance to securing a pair as I can't buy it in Europe at this current time. Furthermore, I also removed the default audio module from Unity to use a third party tool, but that is a video for another time. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in a video on simplifying your audio for your indie games. The next feature I decided to implement was the wall hug. Although still incomplete, I got it working just enough to be a proof of concept to expand upon in later development. The idea is to have a tightly knit area with a bunch of enemy NPCs patrolling the area. It will be vital for the player to get up against the walls to peek around corners as the isometric top down view will prevent the player from seeing too far ahead of them. I feel this was by far one of the more difficult features to implement. The wall angles played a huge part in making it very difficult. The issue around this was that when the player is rotated, the controls need to work as the player thinks it should work. For instance, if the player is against a south facing wall while holding the forward button, 
The player will hug the wall and A button will make the player move left and the D button will make the player move right. The exact inverse you, sh you would think would happen on a north facing wall. However, only the front and back button should be inverting and the same goes for the east and west facing wall. This feature was broken up into a few smaller parts. The player had to take cover. This was the actual act of actually detecting if the player was close to a wall that the player could take cover in. This was easy part. Unity documentation was amazing when it came to learning uh, raycasting. It made things easier and it made things much simpler in det detecting walls and other game objects. The next part was the cover movement. How will the player move while in cover and how to determine the wall angles as said earlier. Using raycasts along with the normal facing direction of the wall, I could calculate the surface normal facing direction and rotate the player to match the surface normal direction. Once this was done, it was some simple math to figure out the controls while against the wall. All in all, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Part 3 of the feature was to detect when the player is close to the edge of a wall. This was surprisingly easy to do. I just created two empty game objects and attached them to the character at hip height, about half a meter away from each hip. I would then cast a ray about 1-2 to two meters out in front of the side of the character's hips. When the ray cast hit returns empty or null, that means the ray cast is no longer in contact with the wall and or game object. So then we can do something based on the ray cast hitting something or not. Seeing as there is no wall the ray cast can detect, now we are at the edge of the wall. This will then tell the virtual camera, hey, there is no wall on either the left or the right side of the character. Zoom in and look around the corner. Overall, I am very happy with the result. I have a lot of tweaks and updates to do before the system is bug free and works as exactly as I intended to. The third and final feature I would like to cover for this devlog video is more of an architectural feature rather than a game feature. I had a massive problem with getting very confused with if statements and conditions. I'm sure many developers face this sooner or later. The checks to see if an action can take place. If the player is not crouched and the player is not holding a weapon, and the player's stamina is greater than 5 and the player is not sprinting, then do something. You know those super hard to track conditions? They are the worst and my game was plagued by them. I then dropped a message on Discord I'm a part of for some help and an amazing dude by the gamer tag of Dark Fuffy helped me come up with something absolutely groundbreaking in terms of managing conditions. It's super simple right and it goes something like this. Each feature is assigned an empty game object in the inspector. Movement feature, attack feature, crouch feature, jump feature. You can then create a blockless class. This class holds a hash set of objects. Nothing crazy, just objects. You then create two methods. One to add to the blocker and one to remove from the blocker. Super easy, right? Then you simply assign the new blockless class to each and every empty feature in your inspector. Now in your player controller, you need to create a reference to the, that feature game object. And now, when you want a feature to block another, you simply register the feature as a blocker to the other feature. It works like this. When the player crouches, I don't want the player to be able to attack or go into cover from the crouch position. So, in my crouch method, in the player controller, I will simply say that the take cover feature dot register blocker crouch object what this then does is in the cover feature i have a single condition if the cover feature is not blocked and guess what when the player crouches it is blocked so now the player cannot take cover this removes all the complexity around condition checking and speeds up development quite a lot let me know in the comment section below if you want a tutorial on the block list for your game and that is all I have for today's devlog. To support the channel and development of Cloak Protocol, please consider subscribing for more content. I also post on my socials daily for more digestible updates. Thank you so much for sticking around and I will see you in the next video.